So what is going on guys and welcome back to episode number 17 of our Sunderland career mode and we are going to be kicking off this episode with just five games remaining. There's Everton, Arsenal uh, are the two biggest games left and as you can see from the bottom right of your screen we're still fighting for that Champions League space. So in this episode you will pretty much have an idea how well we get on and in the next episode you will decide or well you won't decide but you will be able to see if we manage to make the Champions League, which can be a big ask, but let's see how we get on. We are going to be playing our second team lineup in this one against Everton, mainly because we've got a game against Arsenal just two days' time, and we need our full team lineup for that one. But Everton are currently sitting 17th in the league table, so they might still go down. There's nothing saying that they're not going to go down. So I think it's going to be a very difficult game because they are going to be fighting for survival. Everton have a good chance for themselves to play a ball to Stephen Pienaar down the left-hand side. He cuts back inside past Reese Oxford, has a shot. And Jordan Pickford, the young English goalkeeper in our nets, who is Jack Butland's rival, has a pretty comfortable save. But he still manages to save it, which is obviously the most important thing. It might not have been the most spectacular save, but at the end of the day, a save is a save. Have a Kamano using his sheer pace, runs past everyone here. He's one-on-one -on -one with Tim Howard, goes for goal. Howard with a wonderful save. And if it wasn't for Tim Howard there, we would definitely be in front. Kamano picks up the ball within his own area and uses sheer pace to sprint past the whole Everton back line. But unfortunately, his shot did let him down. But he's got another good chance here. He goes one way, then the other. Can he cut back inside? The heels heel flick, then tries to out-muscle the uh, centre-back. But it doesn't work. But we've still got a chance from the corner kick here. Kamano's going to whip it in the box. It does come to Reese Oxford, who is tall in the air. But Tim Howard, the American goalkeeper, comes out and makes a good save and then he makes another good save from Duncan Watmore's shot from the outside of the box. Have a Jack Rodwell squeezing the ball through to Cherry Ambrose who we've moved out to the left hand side. He has a shot and Cherry Ambrose has found the back of the net in the 87th minute and no wonder why I love this guy. Whenever we need him, whenever we need a goal, he steps up to the plate. Jack Rodwell who's just caught on the pitch plays a lovely ball through to him. He cuts back inside and Tim Howard was not going to be stopping that one. What about that for a stroke with his left boot right into the top hand corner off the post and Thierry Ambrose scores his fifth goal in the Barclays Premier League and that is an extremely good record considering he doesn't play many games. Have we got another good chance to double our lead here? We squeeze it through to Mbolo. Mbolo's one-on with Tim Howard. Surely he's going to find the back of the net. He doesn't. He gets too much power on it and clips the top of the crossbar, but hopefully that should be it for the game. The referee should blow his final whistle, and we should be able to wrap up all three points. So Ambrose's goal did prove crucial to be the winning goal, and for helping us picking up all three points. It was a wonderful goal from him, but my man of the match does go to Jordan Pickford. Even though he didn't make any fantastic saves, he still came out and collected a few balls, and I thought he did play very well in that game, but Thierry Ambrose was not far behind him with a fantastic goal. We are now, however, going to move into the the second game of the episode which is going to be at the stadium light up against Arsenal who are currently fighting to get into a Champions League space as well so they're going to really go out for this game because they know it's a must win game for them they have to pick up all three points if they want to stand any chance of making it into the Champions League next season. Arsenal have another good chance they strike it Jack Butler with a good save and Adam Matthews is there to clear the ball away or do we clear it as it comes to Deli Ali? but Mateus Pereira actually is the person in the end that does in fact manage to get the ball out of harm's way but a very promising start for Arsenal and we're really struggling to defend in the early stages Arsenal have a lovely good chance Alex Oshley Chamberlain cuts inside Jack Butler makes the save but he cannot push the, the ball away from danger he pushed it straight into the path of the German playmaker Messer Ozil and a Unfortunately for us, a player of his quality is never going to miss from there. Jack Butland, I thought he should have done a little bit better. I know it was a powerful shot, but Butland it knows as a goalkeeper, you have to, if you're going to make the save, you either hold it or you punch it away and get it out of harm's way. And he did neither of the two. And that, in theory, cost us the goal. Arsenal have another good chance. Alex Oxley chamberlain cut inside once again from the right-hand side. This time, Patrick Van Aanholt does manage to sniff out the danger, but we lose it again. It comes to Mattel Flemini. Flemini plays the ball out wide to Ozil. They play the ball back inside, and Alexis Sanchez's header goes wide of the post. But Arsenal look really dangerous every time they come on the attack. 
and we don't have answers for it. Danny Welbeck has sprinted past John Stones. John Stones is going to try best to catch up with him. Danny Welbeck goes for goal, but this time his England teammate matches it with a one-handed, wonderful save stretched out to his right-hand side. Jermaine Defoe plays the ball back to John Stones. John Stones, we don't know whether he can hit it, but we play it out wide to Jeremy Lenz. Lenz cuts back inside, and Nacho Monreal does read it and manages to cut out the danger. But that just sums up our game, to be honest. We played awful all game, and I don't know how Arsenal are only 1-0 in front, because considering how bad we played... It wouldn't surprise me if they were two or three up, to be honest. Alexis Sanchez with a lovely chance, and they tried the back heel by Santi Cazorla. And Jack Butler once again matching it with a really good save. And if it wasn't for Jack Butler in this game, we would definitely be two or three down. I was critical of him for the first goal they scored because I thought he could have done a little bit better. But apart from that, Jack Butler has played really well in this game, and he has denied Arsenal on several different occasions. So as the final whistle goes, it's very unsurprising that Jack Button does pick up man of the match and he did make really good saves. I know the first one was, you can argue that it was his fault or whether it wasn't, that's up to you guys to decide. But also just looking at the stats, Arsenal completely and utterly dominated the game. They had 12 shots, 9 on target, considered, well, compared to our 1 and 1 on target, which is about in the first few minutes of the game, which was a very long-range shot. It was a very comfortable save for Peter Cech. So, if we want to be making the Champions League, we've got to be putting in a lot better performances than that. So now we're going to move into the third and final game of the episode, which is going to be away from home at the Britannia Stadium up against Stoke. So, in theory, we should come out with all three points in this game, but then, considering the form we've been in, that is going to be very difficult because... As you've seen, not just in this episode, but in the previous episodes as well, we haven't been playing the best football. So with a really good chance to play the ball to Jordan Shakiri, Shakiri through to Peters, and Jack Butler with a one-handed save high to his left-hand side. And once again, we're praising Jack Butler because he's playing so well of late. I think after thinking about his previous game, I don't think he could really do much about the first shot. I was very powerful and um, I don't think we can really blame for that one. But we've maybe got a chance to go on the counter-attack here. As Van Arnholt's on the ball, we can see the ball over the top. We don't really want to play it to Correa. Can Correa head that one on? Unfortunately not. But Envila picks up the missing pieces to Mbolo. Mbolo with a flick onto Lenz. Lenz sees the ball through to Correa. And uh, so does the Stoke defender, as not much is happening for us this episode, to be honest. And Uncle Correa through to Mbolo. Mbolo's got nowhere to go, but he goes for goal, strikes it. It comes off the back of someone. It comes to Lenz. Lenz goes for the strike, and Lenz's volley goes wide of the post, but it did, in fact, get a slight deflection on it. Mateus Pereira putting the ball in the box. It's a poor ball, but it comes to Yunus Kabul. And Yunus Kabul, no wonder why he's a centre back. He can't react in time, as um, if that fell to a striker, I think he probably would have found the back of the net. Jan and Vila picking up the ball in a dangerous position, squeezing it through to Lenz. Lenz cut back inside, which is tries to do but he does get tackled but the good thing is we've got a free kick right on the edge of the box as the Stoke number 15 Marco Van Ginkel takes out Jan and Vila and we've got a really good chance for Ankel Correa. Correa can he get it up and over the wall into the back of the net he gets it up he gets it under and Ankel Correa our number nine who we've just recently changed the number because we wanted to make him our number one striker and boy does he find the back of the net from there a wonderful strike from the free kick, Jan Avila gets taken out, we decide to give it to Ankel Correa, give him responsibility, Shea Given doing his very best to fly across the goal, couldn't get anywhere near it, and Shea Given, the goalkeeper that replaced Jack Butland since we signed him from Stoke, couldn't do anything about that one. Stoke give the ball away. We've got a really good chance. We squeeze it through to Mateus Pereira. Mateus Pereira is surely going to find the back of it. Ball rolls to one side. Hits it at Shea Given. And Shea Given with a wonderful double save. He had a really good touch on that one to deny it from getting into the back of the net. But then he managed to get back on his feet just in the nick of time to uh, actually get back in, up in time and deny the ball from crawling over the line into the back of the net. But Mateus Pereira, I thought, should have done a little bit better there and should have at least found the back of the net. But he failed to do that. That's the only downside to his game. He fails to find the back of the net. But Mateus's prayer effort towards the end of the game does not prove to be crucial because we still managed to pick up the 1-0 result and pick up all three points. Jack Butland is my man of the match once again as he played fantastic for us, making a few vital saves.
However, that is in fact going to be it for this episode of Career Mode. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to hit the like button down below as it is going to be very much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. And also, if you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as it really does, once again, help me out. And also, it allows you to keep up to date with all my latest videos and career modes. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.